It's 2023. You know what I did in 2023? I gamed quite a bit. So here are the top five games that I played in 2023. Starting the list, we have Tales of Symphonia. Tales of Symphonia is a phenomenal game. All right, I started getting to Tales in 2021 when my good friend GNS, a uh, really awesome, awesome person, by the way, he gifted me Arise, and Arise is probably still my favorite Tales game at the moment. But after that, I played Berseria, I played Symphonia, and now I'm currently playing Vesperia, which Vesperia is probably going to be the background video of, of, of this video that, that you'll see. Uh, but yeah, anyway, Symphonia is a phenomenal game, really is a great game uh, I love the music and I love you know what I love most about Symphonia I love the characters the characters my favorite cast of any Tales game at the moment uh, truly there was just a phenomenal cast all around the combat system was fun uh, you know the story was great uh, the only thing I don't like about Symphonia and, <laughs> and I complained about this quite a bit on the stream was uh, the dungeons man the dungeons are kind of shit yeah, a lot of them, you know, a lot of the dungeons are really, really bad. Not, like, not the worst by any means. I, really, not, like, I've seen a lot worse, uh, a lot more worse dungeons than uh, the ones in Symphonia. However, the ones in Symphonia are pretty not too good. But, overall, I mean, what RPG doesn't have shit dungeons, right? But, regardless, Tales of Symphonia is still a fantastic, fantastic game. And I think if you want to get into the Tales series, you should really look into Symphonia as your first starting point. Okay, I know we have Arise, I know we have, you know, Berseria and stuff, other stuff that you can start with, and those are valid choices as well. But I think Symphonia, if you get into Symphonia, you will not be disappointed. You will come back and want more Tales, okay? I can see why this game is as popular as it is. So, yeah, but Tales of Symphonia, amazing game, coming in at number 5. Coming in at number 4 is actually the newest game on this list, and that is Toho Artificial Dreaming Arcadia. This is a Toho fan game made by Bar Holographic Otaku, and wow, I mean, just... Like, that's really all I can say, is just, wow, like, the amount of work that they put into this game is staggering, okay? This game is literally a, uh, Toho slash Shin Megami Tensei mix, okay? It's either, I think it's SMT 1 or 2, but I think it's 1, correct me if I'm wrong. But this game, this game is just, just unbelievable. I mean, the amount of work that, that, uh, BHO put into this game is, it, it's, it's insane. It, it's, I'm speechless, like, I'm, I'm tripping over my words because I just don't, I, I just can't find the words to describe this game. It's amazing, alright? It blends the Toho and Shin Megami Tensei elements together beautifully. I mean, masterfully. Alright, this game is a ton of fun to play. It's got all your favorite Toho characters. It's got classic Shin Megami Tensei gameplay. And honestly, I think if you want to get, if you're a fan of any, uh, either series, whether it's SMT or Toho, I think this is the perfect game to get into either series, alright? You're an s fan, you want to get to Toho? Well, you can learn about the world, the characters, and, and all the lore uh, with your favorite s gameplay. Without Demon Negotiation too, I mean, I think you can set it to Demon Negotiation. Um, but you can also, well, you shouldn't because Demon Negotiation sucks, it's always been the worst part of s &T, hands down. Like, who actually likes Demon Negotiation, right? But you can you you could actually understand a little bit of Toho gameplay, the bullet hell gameplay, with their own built-in hijack mechanic, which lets you play a, a spell card essentially. And then once you beat the spell card, you obviously get to choose what you want to do with the yokai. You can choose to uh, make it a party member, make it an item, get some money. And it's just great. And if you're a Toho fan who wants to get into Shin Megami Tensei, well, you can experience classic Shin Megami Tensei gameplay, you know, dungeon crawling and all that good happy stuff, while keep, while, you know, with your favorite characters, while keeping your party your favorite Tohos, alright? You want to get through a Shin Megami Tensei game with, I don't know, Flandre, uh, Oku, and Patchy, my top three favorites, by the way. Uh, you can do that, alright? You play a Sumareko, and yeah, for some people who like Sumareko, this is your game. You get to play as her. She is the protagonist. So yeah, the music is gr the music is great. Uh, you know, Toho music, but with that classic SMT feel. The dungeons are awesome. I really love the way. I I just love the way they also incorporate so many games and so many stories into one. Right? It just 
it's just it's just a great game. I I can't describe it any further, man. You you have to experience this game. If you're a Toho fan or an SMT fan, or even if you're not a fan of either series, right? I I would still recommend this game. This game is great. I'm almost done with it, and I'm gonna miss it when I'm done with it because man, this game is this game is just fun, man. And Bar Holographic Otaku, you put in you and your team. I, I don't know if you're a single person or, or a team, but whoever you put in so much work, and this game is great. So yeah, number four is Toho Artificial Dream in Arcadia, and that is a that is a pretty uh, Toho Zune esque name too, by the way. So <laughs> you knocked it out of the park there with that too. But yeah, this game is great. Comes in at number four. And speaking of Toho, let's keep on this Toho train with our number three spot, Toho Seven perfect cherry blossom now i played eosd a lot last year okay and i thought you know what bullet hells are fun but they're stressful and i'm not gonna play any more toho right I, I, eosd already beat the crap out of me so much i beat flan this year actually which is pretty cool and yeah you know i, I was like i'm done with bullet hells and then i bought four more <laughs> okay i bought four more i bought uh, 7 Perfect Cherry Blossom, 8 Imperishable Night, 11 Subterranean Atomism, and 19 Unfinished Dream of All Living Ghosts. And first of all, if this was a naming convention, a, a, a naming list rather, uh, Unfinished Dream of All Living Ghosts would be number one on any sort of list because th that name is just hysterical. Like, <laughs> Zune does not miss with his, with his names, man. But yeah, uh, but in my opinion, of those four that I played this year, I have to give the number one spot to Toho 7 Perfect Cherry Blossom. It is my favorite Toho game. I know it's not exactly the most unique choice for a favorite Toho game, but I mean, you cannot deny it. It is Toho perfection, all right? Again, it builds upon EUSD's gameplay, but adds new features, all right? It, uh, you know, a lot of the cards are less RNG dependent. Uh, the music obviously is more or less the same. The music's phenomenal. I think my favorite theme is uh, the stage six theme. It's I mean I can listen to that all day. That's uh, just it's just great. And you also get this mechanic called a cherry border. Now <laughs> you might think I like it because of skill issue, and you're partially right. But I also beat Subterranean Atomism, so you know who who has the real skill issue, skill issue now? Yeah, one C seed it with Rainbow C. Ha ha ha. Uh, but yeah, anyway, like I uh. <laughs> Uh, I love the, the, the cherry border mechanic, you know, it's basically like, it's kind of like the shields, I guess, In they're called shield in 19, right? Yeah, they're called like shields, whatever, EX shield, where you basically uh, can get hit, or you can bomb while you use your border still up and just clear the screen, and I think that's pretty cool. I think this is gay, I think this game is personally, uh, I think this game is great for beginners, alright, even though it's still hard, it's Toho, it's a bullet hell, it's gonna kick your teeth in. But if you want to really get into the series, I think you should start with Perfect Cherry Blossom. Alright, it has some of my favorite characters, Ron, Yuyuko, Yomu, uh, with also keeping some of your favorites, right? You can play as Sakia for all you Sakia fans out there, and uh, Cyrano's in the game, <laughs> you know? Cyrano appears in, as the mid-boss of Stage 1, so you see her fairly quickly. And yeah, no, this game is just great. It, to me, personally, it's Toho Perfection. Uh, I just I just love it. I can't get enough of it. I haven't put as much time in it as EUSD because you know I'm doing stuff IRL, uh, like you know looking at looking to moving out and shit because you know adults do that. Uh, yeah, but so I haven't been putting in as much time as I would love to in this game. But when everything when the dust settles, trust me, I'll be playing more Perfect Cherry Blossom. But with that being said, PCB, you're an awesome game, and you come in at number three. Now, for number two and number one, I'm going to preface this by saying that this was decided with a coin flip. Like, <laughs> it was because I originally planned number one and two to have, to be a tie, right? Uh, you know, the, the, these two games would share number one, then the honorable mention would go to the number five spot. But I don't like ties, I don't think anybody likes ties, and I feel like that would be a cop-out. So I tossed a coin, because I kind of like these games equally, for their own reasons. And yeah, I think I'm happy. I'm happy with how the coin flip ended. So without further ado, let's get into number two, Fire Emblem Engage. Oh wow, Fire Emblem Engage. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I was kind of losing interest in the Fire Emblem series. You know, I was. Um, 
I don't know, it was just, I was kind of falling out of love with it. I didn't really care about the updates and, you know, like, and stuff like that, news about the new game. I wasn't really, like, feeling it, you know what I mean? For some reason, I don't know what it was. Maybe the last time I played, tried to replay uh, uh, Three Houses on Maddening left a really sour taste in my mouth. Yeah, but it's not the series' fault. It's just like I don't like three houses. I don't like replaying three houses. I think three houses is a great game, but you know, I don't really like replaying it. And you know, when Alier came out, you know, I was I was one of those people that was roasting their design. I didn't like it at first. However, I've played the game, and I, wow, I I'm, I love the series again, man. I it really pulled me back in. I, I love this game so much that I played it twice this year. I beat it on Maddening not too long ago. I think by the time I record this video, I beat it like a few days ago. So, awesome, awesome. Yeah, man, I beat it on Hard Mode, then I beat it on Maddening. And I gotta tell you, Engage is really, really an awesome, awesome, super amazing game. It's so good. The music. It's, it's awesome. It's great. The music's phenomenal. All right, the characters. Now I'm gonna get a lot of flack probably for this, but I will say this is what some of the this is one of the strongest cast of characters I've seen personally. All right, is the writing as good as let's say Three Houses? Mm, I wouldn't say so, but I still think the characters have very strong personalities. I don't think most of them are one note per, in my opinion. I think uh, I like the characters, man. I really did. And, you know, uh, most Fire Emblem games, like, during, like, the last map, I'm okay with sacking a unit, you know, sacrificing one unit or two, but, uh, I, I didn't this time. I was like, no, 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 We're going to make it through without losing a unit. We, we, our team, our team must remain alive, right? But, no, the gameplay is amazing. The story is, the story is so, it, what I like about the story, it's so Saturday morning cartoonish. Like, I, I just I just ended up loving it, like, unironically. It's such a Saturday morning cartoon that you can't not love it after a while, you know? It, it'll grow, it grows on you, personally. Um, you know, some of the, again, I, there are some problems with the writing, especially regarding some of the emblem rings, like Erica and her brother, you know, for some reason she has an inferiority complex to him, which I don't think was mentioned in Sacred Stones. I mean, I played that game like four times, you know? Maybe, maybe I missed it, but it definitely wasn't in there. But other than that, though, uh, the game, I love the Somniel. The Somniel is way better than the Monastery. Anyone who says differently, oh my goodness, you're just coping. You just refuse to, you honestly just refuse to see the facts. The Somniel is the perfect, like, My Castle sort of thing, right? We have the we have the My Castle from Phase. We have the Monastery Three Houses. I guess you could consider the Barracks from Path of Radiance somewhere. Uh, you can kind of sort of consider the Barracks in that conversation. But I think the Somniel is the best out of all of them. Uh, there's a lot, there's stuff to do, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. Uh, a lot of the things that are helpful, like the arena, I think the arena is great. Personally, it's probably my favorite thing about the Somniel. The well is pretty cool too. The well was added recently, not too long ago. And, uh, yeah, and I just love, again, emblems. The emblems were great from a gameplay perspective. They were just awesome. I really, really enjoyed Fire Emblem Engage. And I enjoyed it so much that I played it twice in the same year, right? And I played on Maddening, and, uh, you know, there's times where I want to rage quit, but I stuck through it. I stuck through it. I beat Maddening. Let's go. Give, it, give, me, a, give me a nice little round of applause. Yeah, but I just, can't, I just can't say enough nice things about Engage, you know? It's just a really awesome game. I, I definitely do recommend it for Fireball fans. I do not recommend this as a first starter, obviously. This is probably the worst game you could start out with because you're going to be missing so much so much lore, so much... Um, you're not going to get you know, right? I would definitely play at least three to five games before playing this game. But yeah, no, this game is just a phenomenal game. I love Engage. I think it might be, aside from Token Mirage Sessions, of course, that's you know the best. I think this might be my favorite. If 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 it's not if it's not my favorite, it's definitely my second favorite. I think Path of Radiance probably still is my favorite, besides Token Mirage Sessions, of course. Uh, yeah, no, I would play Engage. If you love Fire Emblem, if you really want a good Fire Emblem game with amazing, a stellar. Oh my goodness, I can't. I can't say enough how good the gameplay is. Even though sub maps are shit, the gameplay is, is incredible. It's out of this world. Play, engage. 
you will not regret it. You even if you want to wait for if you want to wait for a prize shop, fine. All right, all right. We all got we all got to save some money. All right, money's getting tight. The economy is 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 what it is. Right, but if you but you have to play this game at some point. You have to. It's a great. And yeah, again, it's a share. It's essentially a moral number one for me that I played this year. Number one and two, like I said, was decided to win a coin flip. However, this lost the coin flip, and it comes in at number two. Still a phenomenal game. Could have easily been number one, but we have Fire Emblem Engage at number dos. Now, before we get into number one, I do have one honorable mention, and that is Mega Man Battle Network 2. Now, I got the Mega Man Battle Network collection after I talked so much crap about, no, oh, we're never gonna get a Battle Network collection, man. Capcom, oh, they forgot about it. Battle Network, that's a thing of the past. It ain't, it ain't happening. But you know what? It did happen, and it's amazing, and it's awesome. It's cool. I'm saying amazing and awesome a lot, but that's how great these games are. <laughs> I know that. Trust me, I'm self-aware. You know, the, the, uh, I played Battle Network one and two. I played three a shit ton as a kid, and I played four as well too. But I don't like four. I ain't, I'm never replaying four. Sorry. I do plan on playing five and six though. However, this year I was only managed. I only managed to, to play uh, one and two, and I have to give the spot to two, right? Because two is where Battle Network really took off. All right. One, there's a lot of issues with one. However, it was the first game. It was really. It, there was really no game like Battle Network when it first came out, right? There was really nothing like it. So, I, I forgive them for all, all of its faults. But, that doesn't change the fact that 2 took one's idea and just improved, improved, and improved. And then what it do? Improved some more, improved a little bit, and improved a lot. It, it, was, it just, it takes what it does with 1 and just makes it better. Um, a little longer, okay, we have more varied uh, chip, battle chips, uh, the story's a little better, and yeah, no, it's just it's just a great game. I think Battle Network is truly an amazing game. I still think 3 is by far the best one. However, I have yet to play 5 and 6, so my opinion could change. However, judging from the first 4, 3 is still the best one, but I played 1 and 2 this year, and the honorable mention goes to 2. It's a really great game, and if you want to get into Battle Network, dude, just, just get, get the collection, please, just get it. Come on, that's a once in a lifetime collection. We're, we're probably never gonna have something like that ever again in the future. Okay, maybe not never say never because I didn't think we were gonna have it, but look where we are now. However, that doesn't change the fact that you should get it now. If Battle Network's a phenomenal series, really great games. I do plan on playing more. I'm probably gonna play Battle Network 5 and then 6 after I beat Vesperia or after I beat Disgaea 2 that I'm also playing, which is a really great game as well. Uh, you know, but yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. However, uh, Battle Network 2, is the honorable mention for this list and number one again it was decided with a coin flip however honestly I am kind of happy that this game won the coin flip and that game is none other than Ease 9 Monstrum Nox. Ease 9 is I mean it's just wow wow man I, I I, I'm just blown away, dude. I, I can't even say it. I can't even talk about it, man. It's just... But I will. Anyway. <laughs> I just I just couldn't believe how good this game was. Alright? I know... I, listen, the E's series and I... I'm gonna give you a little lore about the E series and I, right? I started with Oath and Felgana. Why? Because I'm a fucking badass. And, well, Choops, my good friend Choops, you know, a streamer on Twitch and YouTube, makes phenomenally edited videos and, like, probably the best layouts I've ever seen on a streamer. Uh, go check him out, follow him, subscribe to him, whatever. And uh, he gave me Oath and Felgana, and, like, he knows it. I don't have to keep it. Like, I I don't have to keep I think I said this, the, said this last year, but, yeah, I don't have to keep it a secret, dude. I freaking could not stand that game it filtered me it was a hundred percent a skill issue on my part it is a good game but it was a skill issue however uh he gifted me eight and you know i was scared but i was excited eight blew me away eight was a phenomenal game i think it was number two on my last list right so i think it's kind of nice that ease uh nine is number one on this list but um you know, it's it's just a really great game, and you know, GNS just yeah, the GNS gifted me Ease Nine. He did. I, I I just can't believe how good this game is, man. I 
played it. I I think personally this game improves on on eight. Like if E's nine was a ten, eight would be like a like a nine point five. All right, they're close to each other in terms of quality, but there are some things that E's nine does improve over eight. First off, I love the way that the skill, like the outside world skills, you know, like the gifts or in eight, like the equipable items are handled. Instead of having to go to the menu and equipping, you know, the appropriate item and stuff, you, you get to use them all whenever you want. You just have to wait a little bit to recharge. But the recharge bar, first of all, you very rarely run it out. And when you do, it takes like, what, two or three seconds to heal up, not even. There are even some, I think there are even some things that you get to make it heal faster. And there are heal spots anyway for it, but you know, it improves upon that. Um, you know, I think the story is a lot better than an eight. The characters as well. Eight had great characters. Don't get me wrong. I love the cast of Eight. All right, Loxia will always be my my uh my Falcom boo. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm a 29 year old still saying that, but it's cool. Uh, however, I do like the characters a little more in Nine. I felt more invested in them. Actually, con thinking about them actually kind of making me. I'm about to tear up a little bit because man, that ending. Oh, that ending. I, I think I cried actually during the ending. The I, I, I don't even want to listen to the ending song because I I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start the tears are gonna well up and uh, and all that and I don't want that to happen. But yeah, the characters were phenomenal in this game. Uh, the gameplay of again for the most part it is basically ease eight but with a little a uh, few more quality of life improvements. Again, this game and eight are super close to quality. But nine definitely improves it a little, a uh, little more, and maybe the Victorian Gothic setting might not be for everybody. You know, ease typically, you know, is is based on, like islands or very like sunny, very you know, very like bright places. Whereas nine is, you know, it's darker, it's gloomier. Uh, but I think I think if you if you get used to it, once you get used to it, it's you're in for an amazing game, an incredible, un unbelievable game. Uh, yeah, Ease 9 is just phenomenal, and I do thank Troops a lot for getting me into the series. Uh, Ease 10 better come soon. I want to play Ease 10 very badly now. But yeah, and again, I, Ease, Ease me, the, the gameplay, phenomenal. Story, great. Characters, incredible. The music, it's Falcom, it's self-explanatory. It will fuck. All right, the music fucks. It, it's just how it is. It's, Falcon music is good. I don't know. I don't know what team they have for their music, but whoever they are, they're doing a great job. Because damn, there is not a single bad track in either eight, nine, or Felgana for that matter. Okay, I, I said something nice about Felgana. Okay, you happy? Good. Leave me alone. But <laughs> nine is truly, truly, truly a, a game worth playing. Is it a good starting point for the series? I've only played three Ease games. I'm gonna say probably not. I would say play. I don't play Felgana unless you're a badass like me. Uh, <laughs> I would say definitely say uh, start out with maybe eight could be a good starting point, or uh, maybe one of the older games. I don't know. If you need a good starting point, ask Choops. He'll know better. He'll know more than me. But that's just the fact that nine is just a, what a great game man like i said when i when i finished it i didn't want to finish it like i was playing it and when we got to the end i did not want to finish it that's how good this game was i was so good that i wanted it to keep going i wanted to play ease 9 forever but all good things must come to an end uh, ex except for like pokemon well i don't know that's debatable of whether the good pokemon ended but <laughs> that's another debate for another like time but, you know, um, yeah, Ease 9, incredible, it's just a great game, man, like, seriously. If you want a great, uh, incredible action RPG that is pretty, pretty long, it's fairly long, right? I put, uh, about, a f about, uh, 40 hours in the game, a little less, actually, uh, there was, I thought I put in way more hours than an 8, it's a little shorter than 8, it it's slightly shorter, and there's only one ending, so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, not getting enough points for the true ending. There's only one ending, to my knowledge at least. And yeah, that's all I gotta say about it. And, uh, oh, also speaking of gameplay, I think the raids in 9 are way better than 8. I, I think it's not even close. I think the raids in 8 were good, but the, not, the raids in 9 were, I mean, just infinitely better. But yeah, anyway, Ease 9, 
amazing. Again, coin flip decided. However, I'm actually happy that E's9 won the coin flip. He definitely deserves it. And E's9, congratulations, because you are the best game that I played in 2023. So, good job, man. Adol, keep being you. And get us E's10 already, because fuck me, I want to play that. <laughs> so, yeah. E's9, numero uno. Thank you all so much for watching. I know it sounds like I don't script these videos, and that's because I don't. I, I speak from the heart. Uh, I don't like I don't like scripting, and I, I know that sounds corny as fuck, but I don't you know I don't like scripting in general. Uh, I think it's boring. I just prefer just just talking off the top of my head. You know what I mean? And yeah, and again, thank you all so much. Uh, please watch me on Twitch on twitch.tv forward slash general v4n. Number four is supposed to act as the A. And yeah, I hope you all had a, a fantastic 2023. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you celebrate. Have a great New Year. And I hope 2024 will be great for you. I hope it will be, I will be even better than 2023. No matter how your 2023 was, I hope 2024 will be incredible for you. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. And as always, peace and have yourselves a damn good night.